top segment on the Sports Max Zone for this Monday. The West Indies registered an emphatic series win against Bangladesh, beating the visitors by 10 wickets in St. Lucia earlier on Monday. Now, heavy rains and a wet outfield delayed action with play eventually getting underway at 3 p.m. local time. The Windies didn't take much time to dismiss the Tigers for 186, having resumed the Tigers did at 132 for 6. Nurul Hassan top scored with 60. Jaden Seals, Kimar Roach and Alzari Joseph all picked up three wickets. The Windies just needing 13 runs for the victory reach the target in just 17 deliveries without losing a wicket. Kyle Mears, who scored 146 in the West in his first innings, was named Man of the Match and also Player of the Series. He scored a total of 153 runs and took six wickets. Fazir Mohammed joins us now to review the second test and uh, the series. Well, Faz, welcome to the Sports Match Zone again. We had discussed prior to the start of the series that this is a series that the West Indies should win. They did. What's your um, report card on their performance? Predictable. Uh, again, we talked about it on Friday after Bangladesh had been dismissed for 234 and the West Indies were already 67 without loss and barring the intervention of the elements it probably could have been over uh, even earlier today because we lost five and a half hours uh, play. So at the end of it all, you've got to win. You've got to win these matches. You've got to defeat these opponents. When you listen to the uh, Bangladesh captain, Shakib al Hassan, he almost takes it for granted that when they go away from home, they'll struggle which is a very disappointing perspective to have if you're talking about any sort of growth as a, as a test match nation. But from a West Indies point of view, you can only play the team that's in front of you. Uh, the seven-wicket win in the first test match in uh, Antigua and then a 10-wicket win here. It wasn't all plain sailing because there were struggles along the way. But at the end of the day, I think the West Indies would have been expected to win and win emphatically in these two test matches, and they did so. Selection chief... Desi Haynes Faz spoke over the weekend about the team's batting and he suggested that he would like to see the batsmen being a little more, more positive, um, pursuing runs and not just occupying the crease. Um, your thoughts on Desi Haynes' comments? That's a point that has been made ad nauseum when we've been talking about the West Indies, whether in the T20 format, dot balls comes up as a major discussion, one international cricket, that comes up as a major discussion, and in Test Match cricket as well. I think the point that Desmond Haynes is making is not about being reckless, not about thinking that you could score off every ball, but being positive, because there's a difference between... The, the, the way the West Indies batsmen of, of, of the modern generation seem to want to go about the game. It's either you're Formula One, Vettel, or you're a donkey cart. Nothing in between. For the, for, but when you think about it, really, there should be options, singles here and there, alternating the strike, keeping pressure on the bowlers, not just blocking everything and building pressure on yourself. So invariably, you're going to get out to the unplayable delivery. And I think that's the point that Desmond Haynes was making. Definitely, Faz. And I move along now to Kyle Mayers, who was awarded Man of the Match and Man of the Series. How satisfied were you with his overall performance? I've been very impressed with Kyle Mayers, uh, virtually from the test match against England when he got that opportunity. And even before that, when uh, the West Indies were badly beaten uh, by South Africa in St. Lucia last year, you saw him bowling seam up and presenting lots of challenges. As a batsman, he gives you that positive mindset. You'll have to temper that, though, when you're coming up against really quality bowling by recognizing that you can't play all those expansive shots every time. Because again, to the same South Africans last year, he looked good in patches only to get out with a poor shot. The thing is that you're coming up against a Bangladesh team with their younger fast bowlers still learning their trade, and he capitalized. Take nothing away from him. 210 not out in that famous victory in Chattogram in February of last year. 146 this time around. Important wickets along the way. I think what Kyle Mayers is showing are the possibilities when you focus on growing and developing your game. Because he's no spring chicken. He's closer to 30 than he is to 20. But because of that experience, because of that know-how, because he understands his game, I think he knows what he needs to do to improve his game. And we all know the ultimate challenge is coming up at the end of the year in the shape of Australia in Australia. So that is going to be the real acid test for Kyle Mayers and everyone else in the West Indies setup. Yeah, and you know, 
most times when we talk about teams, a lot of people, you know, point to the leader and those leading, um, you know, the entire unit. Craig Brathways has come under criticism before for his own personal performances and, of course, his leadership. What did you make of what we saw of him versus Bangladesh? Efficient with, without necessarily being inspiring. For example, yesterday when Bangladesh started their second innings, West Indies, with a lead of 174 runs, had a backward point on the boundary to Tamim Iqbal. Kimar Road rolling to Tamim Iqbal with a deep backward point and a lead of 174 runs. That, to me, didn't make any sense. Right. In the end, the West Indies won, of course, 186 overall, winning by 10 wickets. But if you're talking about really imposing yourself on the opposition, what better team to impose yourself on than Bangladesh? I mean, what could Tamim Iqbal do? in a couple of deliveries and a couple of overs that could cause you to be concerned. But that's just one point. I, I think at the end of it all, Craig Brathwood has the support of his teammates. He has a good group of players together. Uh, they, they've again done well, as you would expect, against Bangladesh. They've got three matches in a row that they've won, ending off that series against England with that win in Grenada. But, uh, but uh, again, there's a lot of work to be done in his own game, in the West Indies overall game, if you really want to match the best in the world in their own conditions. Yeah, and as we continue to reflect and assess how the players performed in the first two test matches to sweep the series, any player that you can point to that, you know, really underperformed? I think Nkrumah Bonner comes to mind uh, as someone, when you talk about a key position, and Raymond Rifa, it was an experiment that obviously didn't pay off to have him at number three in the order. And when you really think about it, Mariah, in any format of the game, you want to ensure that three and four are key performers, are players who can impose themselves on the opposition. Not necessarily by playing a lot of shots, but maybe occupying the crease all day. And the challenge for Nkrumah Bono, who's got two excellent hundreds in Test Match Cricket, is playing against the bouncing ball, playing against the moving ball, playing against quality fast bowling, Raymond Reefa as well. He's going to have to go back to the drawing board and come again because Jason Holder is going to be back in the squad for the next Test Match campaign. And, and clearly he was found wanting in that position of number three. Not for want of trying, but this is about performance. This is a performance environment. This is not a place for nice guys. If you're a nice guy, fine, and you're performing, of course that's fine. But if you're a nice guy and not performing, then you've got to understand that at some point, you're going to have to make way for somebody else. Yeah, um, Faz, does the West Indies feel more satisfied with this winning effort and a sweep, um, given the fact that their best all-rounder, Jason Holder, skipped the series? I don't think so, because it's Bangladesh. And it's Bangladesh away from home. Bangladesh at home are a different story. And again, that's why I highlighted the comments of, of Shakib al Hassan. Because when he was interviewed at the end of the match by Darren Ganga, uh, who asked him obviously about the batting struggles and so on, his first point was that, well, you know, most test teams struggle away from home. It's almost as if it's a given that they'll be like tigers at home, but they'll be worse than pussycats away from home, which is not a good thing. And, and that's why I think that without a Jason Holder, without any other key players that you can mention, I think the West Indies on any sort of surface that is offering some pace and bounds and encouragement for the faster bowlers are going to throttle Bangladesh every time, even though, again, as we've seen from Bangladesh, in Khalid Ahmed, in uh, Ibadat Hussain, in Shorif al-Islam, even in the batting of Nurul Has Islam, Nurul Hassan this evening, they have players with ability, but it just seems that they are comfortable with losing convenient, losing regularly away from home in Test Match cricket. Yeah, so you've established in no uncertain manner, Faz, that defeating Bangladesh isn't something, you know, that, you know, we should glorify too much. It, it is what it is. It is Bangladesh. Having, having said that, John Campbell started this series under pressure for his place as an opening bat. He ended up scoring quite well in this series, 68 average. Only Brathwaite and Myers and, and Mayer scored more runs than, than he did. Uh, how satisfied would he be with this effort? He'll be satisfied to a point. But again, on the second day, when he was on 45 and an opening stand of 100, you carry on, you kick on. You don't waste those opportunities because they don't come your way very often. 
He's been in the West Indies squad in and out since 2019. He's had some decent partnerships with Craig Bradford. But if you've got 100 on the board, you have to be telling yourself, this is my day to cash in. This is my day. At the end of the day, I'm 174 not out. And I've got runs on the board, never mind what people might say about Bangladesh. But he got out. And I think that is where the problem is. For John Campbell, of course, unless something really terrible happens, he's going to be in that squad for those two test matches in Australia at the end of November into December. Test matches in Perth and a day-night match in Adelaide. And you're talking about different conditions, different quality bowlers, bowlers who are not going to give you any sort of breathing room. And I don't know what can be done between now and then for players who are primarily test match specialists to really get themselves attuned to that sort of challenge. Where will be the opportunity for these players, especially to, to the batsmen and even the faster bowlers, to be able to get attuned to taking on a top quality opponent in mm -hmm. conditions which are very intimidating yeah. for the current crop of West Indies cricketers. Yeah, and a quick comment before you go, Faz, about uh, Kimar Roach and uh, entering the 250 club. I, I, I don't think you can praise Kimar Roach enough. Michael Holding was on the record as saying that, look, people will say he suffers by comparison to himself, to Joel Garner, who he's seven wickets away from. But you can't take anything away from someone 13 years in the game, serious injuries, continues to come back to lead the attack. He is an exemplar, not just by his performances on the field, but by his attitude and his professionalism off the field as well. Yeah, okay, Faz, uh, we'll talk again. I know there's some bad weather heading for the Eastern Caribbean, so the T20 uh, series starting in Dominica on Saturday is uh, something we're taking a, a close look at. But let's hope the West Indies and uh, the Bangladeshis could get some good cricket in this weekend in Dominica. Thanks, Faz. You're more than welcome. Take care, Lance. Yeah, all right. So, Mariah, your um, beloved West Indies uh, team delivering the goods here as um, we would have expected against Bangladesh. Alzari Joseph ending up the leading wicket taker 22. as well. So overall, fast touched on it. A couple of disappointments. Bonner didn't do that well, and um, Raymond Reefer and uh, Joshua De, Shil De Silva uh, not too much returns with the bat as well. So. You know, a little bit of disappointment in some areas, but a win is a win. Yeah, a little bit of disappointment, as you said, in some areas, but a lot of improvement and good signs um, from the rest of the batsmen and bowlers. And Lance, I know sometimes we take it for granted when we play teams at home and teams that we feel aren't powerhouses. So what I am most pleased about is the fact that our Windies team, you know, they didn't take Bangladesh for granted and lose the match because that is what tends to happen from time to time. We love to talk on the show about inconsistent performances and whatnot. What we saw from the Windy team was a comprehensive win, you know, in both test matches so far. Improvements from players that, you know, have been under the microscope, both with the bat and ball. So I will say we've seen positive signs overall. Um, you know, there's still room. We know what Joshua De Silva can do and Kruma Bonner and whatnot. They had um, a couple of bad games, but we look forward for them, you know, changing that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty certain that Coach Phil Simmons will be happy with the sort of um, upturn that we are seeing, we are seeing from, from the test team. I think in, in recent years, there are signs that this, this test unit is beginning to gel and beginning to be just a little bit more consistent you know, than they had been several years ago. Yeah, and as I said before, you know, consistency is something that we have moaned and groaned about where the West Indies team is concerned. So we've seen positive signs in the first test earlier in the year. We're now seeing positive, positive signs against Bangladesh. And we're hoping now that this sort of consistency lance can continue. Yeah, we're going to break now. When we come back, we still have some more cricket to talk about, Mariah. Um, a topic that you will love, I'm sure. And Can't we'll be wait. Back. We'll be back <laughs> with more after this. Thank you for watching Sportsmax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.